a happy face of easy fire. Homemade pastry on the way. I'm in love with life all over. Hey, Saturday night, it's the People's Voice Cafe. One of the founders of People's Voice Cafe is Bar Barry Kornhauser, and he is here tonight with Liz Taub and with Lindsay Wilson. So, here's Barry. Besides impeachment in the news, there are also massive demonstrations going on all over the world um, in solidarity with the people of Chile who have, uh, remember th their brother, Victor Jara, have been singing in large numbers just this song, El Derecho Que Vivir in Paz. This will be a somewhat impressionistic take on that.
have in the archives the minutes that prove that Barry Kornhauser, along with Judy Gorman and Mike Glick and some other people around here, were at People's Voice Cafe before it even existed. So we, this is kind of Founders Night, among other things. Uh, People's Voice Cafe is run by volunteers, with one exception. Michael Young is our one paid staff person, a contractor. Here's Michael. And if you would like to become a People's Voice Cafe volunteer, then speak to Sally Campbell. Sally is here. The people who make up the core of volunteers are invited to join the People's Voice Cafe Collective. We are a collectively run not-for-profit organization. And the collective, which meets a couple of times a year, sets the general policy for People's Voice Cafe. So it is really, really an important body. And I'd like anyone here who's a member of the People's Voice Cafe collective to like, just like raise your hand and let us know. There are quite a few of us there. And not all our volunteers are on site. There are people like our accountant, our bookkeeper, Brent Kramer is somewhere here, but he, he does the, uh, a lot of important work off site. Doug Cook is our webmaster. Ann Price does our Facebook events on our Facebook page. Um, David Rose keeps records of uh, people who are subscribers, what we used to call members. So there are a lot of important things to be done on site and a lot of important things to be done off site. The collective, in turn, elects the board of directors. New York State requires that as a nonprofit corporation, we have a board of directors. And any expenditures, any uh, we could take in all the money we want. But if we're going to spend money, we have to authorize it through the board of directors. So the Board of Directors also meets a couple of times a year. If anyone here is a member of the Board of Directors, I know they're, I believe we're all here tonight, are we? A anyway, they, they include uh, Paul and Sally, Bracha, uh, Brent, Victoria, Thelma, Marilyn, and myself. Did I leave someone out? No, that's good. That's all of them. So anyway, if you want to become a member of the collective, become a volunteer. If you want to become a member of the Board of Directors, please become a member of the collective, and then uh, say, I'd like to serve on the board, and uh, you'll be elected. <laughs> uh, we don't have contested elections, you know. This is, a, this is not the New Hampshire primary. Let's see what else we have. Uh, oh, coming up now, uh, uh, Susan Lippman. So, Susan Lippman, I think, was a, she was involved when I first performed here in 2002. And uh, she actually handed me the piece of paper that had all the rules for performers and what you were supposed to do. And uh, It's a letter that we've revised many times and we still use. Uh, for all I know, Susan drafted it. But Susan's a wonderful storyteller and a singer. So, Susan, you have a song, a story, yeah. something. Here's Susan Lippman. Hey, Viva the People's Voice Cafe may it last another 40 years. I've been involved for about 30 years, got involved by accident when I saw a site outside of the door in front of the church, and I was kind of shy then. I never thought I'd be up here, but here I am, and I'm delighted. And for this momentous, momentous occasion, I have written a story, so I invite you all to become children for the next few minutes. This is called Web Weaver, who is, of course, a spider, and it also has a character whom you might not be familiar with, called the wyvern, which is a kind of a dragon. So here goes. Once in the wilderness, a witless, wishy-washy wyvern and a wily witch and a witty wizard went walking through the woods in search of wisdom, which they wished would be within walking distance. As they went along, they whittled some wood and whistled, and the wizard played on a woodwind instrument. As they kept going and finding no wisdom, they became weary and went to sleep, accompanied by woodlarks and wildflowers. When they woke up, they dined on waffles with whipped cream and went on their way. And then they became worried because they found no wisdom when, before long, 
they came upon a weeping willow, which was wailing wistfully. Why are you whimpering, wondered the wizard, the witch, and the wyvern. Oh, why am I wailing? That wicked, worthless wasp has whisked away my wisdom, and now what am I'm at my wit's end. Oh, don't worry, we'll win back the wisdom for the wasp from you, but you have to share it with us because we've been wandering through the woods for weeks in search of wisdom, becoming weary and getting wet and eating walnuts along the way, and we found no wisdom, and now we know why, but we'll win it back for you within weeks, uh, I mean days, so that we're all happy to have the opportunity to go and find the wisdom and get it from the wasp. So, of course, everybody agreed that wizard should go. Now, wizard found the wasp without delay, but wasp was waiting for him from his wee house, and he swooped down, and he stung wizard on the mouth, and then on the windpipe. Now, wizard once had husky voices, but since he was stung to this day, now wizards have wimpy, weak voices, something like Woody Woodpecker. And to this day, wizards are no longer wordy. So wizard went back to his waiting pals, defeated. So witch decided she would go. Surely she could win the wisdom from the wasp with her witchcraft. So she went willingly making wisecracks along the way. Now, witches did not always wear hats, and Wasp was waiting for her from his watchtower, swooped down and stung her many times on the head, so she had so many welts that from that day on, all witches wear hats to hide the welts. <laughs> Witch went back to the waiting pals, also defeated. So, of course, Wyvern had to go, although he was witless, he had to have his few wits about him. So off he went, but he fell asleep in Wonderland. Now, this Wyvern dragon once had four legs, but Wasp swooped down and stung him so hard on both of the legs that they were swelled up and had to be, and they just came off, plop, plop. So from that day on, Wyvern to this day has only two legs. Now Wyvern went back to his waiting pals, defeated. So the Wyvern, the witch, and the wizard went back to the water, guided by the west wind, and were about to give up when suddenly they heard this wee voice. I'll go, said Spiderweb Weaver. Why, Wyvern said, You'll never get win the, the wisdom from the wasp. You're too weeny, she said. Watch me. And she was so small that wasp couldn't see her. So when wasp was fast asleep, she took the wisdom and put it right inside of her web. And then she quickly, while well, the wasp was still asleep, took out the stinger, threw it in the wavy water, and that was the end of this, the wasp, because without a stinger, there was no more wasp. Everybody was delighted and realized how wonderful Webb Weaver was. And the wisdom worked wonders, too, because the wyvern became witty and winsome and wise, and the wizard became the wisest whiz kid in the entire world, and which began to work for the welfare of womankind. And Weeping Willow never weeped again, and as a reward, Webb Weaver was given a wiggly waggly will of the wisp, which delighted her. And they were all so thrilled that they went to the People's Voice Cafe <laughs> to celebrate, where they were greeted by the most welcoming, warmest, wonderful people in the wide world. <laughs> What can I say but wow? <laughs> Mike Lick was one of the founders of People's Voice Cafe. 
And I believe you were performing here, right? When uh, Mike, you were performing here when you heard that uh, your uh, son was coming, right? Well, I, I thought you wanted us to tell the story. Well, I'm, I'm just <laughs> setting you up. You I'm not telling the whole story. I'm just yeah, setting yeah, you up yeah, for yeah, it. Right. Thank you. Well, Mike was performing <laughs> here, and he has a story to tell. Mike, look, go ahead. Yeah. Surly the bed and surly the rise. <laughs> so, uh, so I, among other things, I didn't know I was a founding member of the People's Voice Cafe until Steve told me earlier this year. We have the minutes to prove it. Yeah, they had the minutes. I mean, <laughs> so. It just goes to show that, which I knew all along, that when I, uh, have my autobiography written, which will be never, I'll have to ask other people what happened. Because <laughs> damned if I know. But People's Voice Cafe has been a part of my life for a long time. In fact, um, I, fir I met my first and only wife, and my first and only ex-wife here. <laughs> she was uh, in a uh, event slip play uh, when they were down on West 18th in some church, or around there anyway. Um, this mic seems to have. Uh, okay. So, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. Thank you. So, um, and then I spent about, tw you know, I, I was away from the music business for about 20 years, and I have to thank Ray Corona, because when I uh, ran into him at the People's Music uh, Network a weekend there, uh, he made the People's Voice Cafe at available to me immediately after I had not been playing for quite a long time. And uh, because uh, I had this hiatus of more than 20 years, because I was supposed to have a gig here, uh, when they were down on, just in the, in the middle of the village then on, uh, uh, I don't know what the hell that was, but it was uh, west, around West 4th, I think, West 4th. I was supposed to play, play with, with uh, Suni Pass. And my wife went into labor. So, I love music. And at that time, I loved my wife. <laughs> so, there wasn't much choice. So I went to that. And then, I, I actually wound up not... That was just around the time when I stopped playing music for uh, quite a number of years. So, anyway. Oh, let me also mention, there's a table back there with CDs of many of the artists that you will see. And also some that you won't. And I just would like to put this thought in your head. When you buy one CD for an, from an artist, you are basically giving them about the same money they earn from 5,000 plays on Spotify or Pandora. Just so you know, one of the ways to support the arts. And uh, if we are the People's Voice Cafe, let's support the people's way if we can. Um, so anyway, this is a fundraising night. And uh, I've done a lot of fundraisers, and in fact, I wrote this song as a fundraiser, but they don't seem to want to use it. I don't quite understand. Um, you know, we're trying to raise money for the People's Voice, and there's this uh, you know, evangelic, evangelical Christian who needs money for his fourth jet plane. <laughs> Only $54 million. And... Uh, so, and they asked him, what do you need a new one for? And he said, well, you know, <sighs> took him a while to think. It takes me a while to remember it. He said, well, you know, if Jesus came back, he wouldn't be riding on no donkey. So, I thought he could use this money uh, from this song. Maybe you will contribute to him. Or maybe you'll just say, let me give the money to the People's Voice Cafe instead. And since we're in a church, when you get it, you can join the chorus. There's a lot more in the song, but you'll catch on when you hear it. Let's build a wall around Jesus. We don't want no immigrants here. He was a dark-skinned Jew, and I'm sure he smelled too. And I bet that he even liked queers. Let's build a wall around Jesus. I can't believe he wasn't even white. He was born in a manger, and I don't trust strangers wouldn't even let him stay one night. So we've been learning some new things about Jesus, whether you believe in that person as 
historical or mythical or in a religious way? Number one, he wasn't white. Number two, they didn't have much sanitation in those days either. And he was a lot more tolerant than uh, oh, a bunch of uh, people who believe in the Republican Jesus. So anyway, you can try it. Let's build a wall around Jesus. Let's build a wall around Jesus. We don't want no immigrants. He was a dark skin. He was a dark skinned Jew. And I'm sure he smelled too. And I bet that he even liked queers. Let's build a wall. Let's build a wall around Jesus. I can't believe he wasn't even white. He was born in a manger. And I don't trust strangers. Wouldn't even let him stay one night. You know we spent so much time in the desert Underneath the garlic sun He must have got funky as he rode on his donkey I never saw him with a gun He showed no respect for the Second Amendment Heck, he even preached love for the poor We don't want him here, he better disappear Before I throw him out the door Let's build a wall around Jesus we don't want no immigrants here. He was a dark-skinned Jew, and I'm sure he smelled too. And I bet that he even liked queers. Let's build a wall around Jesus. I can't believe he wasn't even white. He was born in a manger, and I don't trust strangers. Wouldn't even let him stay one night. You know I got me a proper preacher. He even flies around in his own jet. I give him my money so my life stays sunny. And heaven's the reward I'll get. Though I'm not living too high, I'm still getting by. I can feel good about myself. I was not born brown, so I can look down on somebody else. Let's spin the wall around Jesus. We don't want to immigrants here. He was a dark-skinned Jew, and I'm sure he smelled too, and I bet that he even liked queers. Let's build a wall around Jesus, I can't believe he wasn't even white. He was born in a major, and I don't trust strangers, wouldn't even let him stay one night. Now you know when Jesus comes back. He won't be riding on no ass, he'll be as white as the polar snow. And everywhere he goes, he'll be going first class, there'll be servants at his beck and call. He won't have to worry about no loaves and no fishes, eat all his meals on golden dishes, preach the gospel of wealth, let the poor go to hell. But he'll make an exception for me, yes sir. me. Let's fill the wall around Jesus. We don't want no immigrants here. He was a dark-skinned Jew, and I'm sure he smelled too. And I bet that he even liked queers. Let's fill the wall around Jesus. I can't believe he was even white. He was born in a manger, and I don't trust strangers. Wouldn't even let him stay one night. No, I wouldn't let him stay. Wouldn't let him stay. Wouldn't even let him stay one night. We're going to take a short intermission now. During that time, you could drop change in the jar. You could sign our mailing list. If you're not already on the People's Voice Cafe mailing list, you could become a subscriber. We could always use subscribers. And you could speak to, Val, uh, to Sally about becoming a volunteer. And so let's bring on the house lights. And then when we come back, we're going to have a special celebration for Bernie Silver. Uh, that will be in, I guess, about 10 or 15 minutes. So go get something to eat and enjoy. So, dear friends, take my advice. Do think once. Do think twice. Before you throw that plastic in the sea. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt me. But you will cause some 
visibly to Brother Dolphin in his goodness. What everybody sing. Way down yonder where the waters flow, there lived a seahorse and a play banjo. First that thing he knew how best to do. He sang of rivers, he sang of streams, and all the strange things in his dreams, and the peculiar happenings in his glittering. Become a member. Hey, or better yet, a volunteer. Put your muscle where your heart is. So we'll all be here next year. Where? At the Progressive Cafe. Hey, oh, but with these concerts at the cafe, well...